Hi, Scary Recaps here. Today, I'm going to explain the movie No One Gets Out Alive from 2021. Beware of spoilers. A film reel is playing, showing a group of archaeologists exploring a monument deep in the jungle. Within the ancient temple, they find human remains. Workers are seen digging, and soon a strange chest is being pulled up from a hole. To daytime, a tapestry of stuffed butterflies is shown. A young woman is talking on the phone in Portuguese. She says that she wants to leave and expresses her regrets for coming there. The woman sees wet footprints on the floor and stops talking. The lights go out and the woman gets up. She sees a strange box down the hallway and asks if there is anyone there. The box opens and a shady figure with glowing eyes appears behind her. The woman calls out again and the figure grabs her. She screams for a moment until the box closes and then silence reigns. One of the stuffed butterflies shakes its wings and flies away. The lights come back on. In another sequence, a group of Spanish-speaking immigrants are seen exiting their illegal means of transport in the middle of the night. They are successfully in the US. A young woman among them, named Ambar, finally reaches Cleveland. She gets a job at an illegal sewing factory while searching for a place to stay. Eventually, Amber sees an advertisement and decides to rent a room in a decaying boarding house. The owner, Red, walks her to her room and asks for the first month's rent up front. Amber pays him and then settles in. During the night, she listens to old phone call recordings of her mother. A noise distracts her and Amber sees the other resident of the house. Freya crying in her room. In a flashback, Amber's sick mother is caressing her hair. Amber leaves her room and runs into Freya, who replies that Red is no good at all and runs off. At work, Amber is reprimanded by her boss for working slowly. Later, Kinsey, a colleague, informs her of the price of an illegal ID and mentions that the details will say Ohio instead of Texas. That day, Amber is invited over for dinner by Beto, an uncle of hers. She meets Beto's wife, Sylvia, and his son, Carlos. It is revealed that Amber cared for her mother until her death, and because of that, she didn't go to college. Amber returns to the boarding house and asks from Red her deposit back in order to pay for her fake ID. Red replies that he has already spent the money and that there's nothing he can do about it. In another flashback, Amber is sitting with her mother in a hospital room when the same ominous box is noticed. Two grey hands emerge from within the box and Amber wakes up. The next day, Amber asks her boss for some money in advance, but he says no. Later that day, Amber talks with Kinsey and informs her about the fake ID. She says that she needs it by Friday to convince her uncle that she is born in Texas in order to get a decent job. Yet, Amber doesn't have the money. Kinsey, however, offers to help her by lending her the rest of the money. Amber then gives Kinsey all of her savings. During her walk back to the house, the lights on the street flicker and the apparition of Amber's dead mother appears in the distance. Once inside the boarding house, Amber notices a strange man banging his head on the wall and chanting gibberish. Amber goes to her room and the same man marks and bangs her door once and leaves. After some time, Amber goes to the kitchen, and there she meets two Romanian women, Maria and Petra. Red comes in and sends the new residents up to their rooms, while Amber asks him about the stranger in the hall. Red says that that is Becker, his brother, and that there is nothing to worry about. Later on, Amber, intrigued by a set of strange noises, enters the study. She discovers a tape player where she listens to a man saying something about sacrificing women. Amber recoils in fear and looks at some of the photos. While investigating the room, an outwardly shriek startles her and a ghostly figure appears in a corner. In the morning, Amber learns that Kinsey has quit and left with her money. In her frustration, Amber gets fired and later on tries in vain to contact Kinsey. That night, while Amber is having a shower, she hears a woman screaming in pain and calling for help. She sees a blonde woman that resembles Freya standing next to her, but as she pulls the curtain, the woman vanishes. On her way out, Amber sees Red, 
who informs her that he can give her the deposit the following day. After a bad dream, Amber wakes up and sees the apparition of a girl running towards her. Another apparition, that of an old woman, appears and drags the little girl away. Amber follows them downstairs and tries to comfort the little girl. Suddenly, the girl is being pulled away and Amber freaks out. She packs her things and calls her uncle, Beto, asking for his help. Beto tells her to stay out of trouble and that he'll come to help as soon as he can. Amber leaves the house and with what little money she has, she tries to find a new place to stay. While on the subway, Amber sees her dead mother pointing at the gloomy box. Frightful hands come out of the box and Amber wakes up in a diner, obviously having a nightmare. Red comes to the diner and says that Amber's money is in the house. Amber agrees to return to the house to collect the money, but as it turns out, Red has lied to her. He tells her about his father, who was an archaeologist and used to dig up all sorts of strange artifacts. Amber attempts to leave, but Red stands in her way. He tries to calm her down until Becker arrives. He chants something and forces Amber to drink alcohol. They leave and Red locks the door behind him. After a little while, Maria and Petra come. They are frightened by Becker's actions and agree with Amber to leave when it's possible. Petra says there's a menacing stone box in the basement and many women have died there. Fear engulfs the three women. Later that night, Maria starts to sing a lullaby in her native language. Petra accompanies her and Ambar sees the spirits of the dead women that haunt the house standing in the room. Without realizing it, Amber has fallen asleep. She wakes up by the screams of Maria and Petra who are being taken away by Red and Becker. Amber fights Red but she is overpowered by Becker. The doorbell then rings and Amber is quickly locked away in the room while Red goes to the door. Beto has come to see Amber, but Red lies, saying that she has left. Beto, however, notices Amber's coat, a gift from Sylvia, and hears Amber screaming from the upper floors. Red tries to close the door, but Beto forces his way in. Beto climbs the stairs, looking for Amber. He finds the room that Amber is in, but Becker grabs him and beats him to death. Red and Becker put Amber with Petra and Maria. Becker takes Maria away while Red prepares a chained Amber, smearing her with green powder. Red says that Becker was sick and that their father was sacrificing women. Even their mother, Mary, was killed. Red and Becker avenged their mother, but then Becker started spending time with the stone box. He got better over time and thinking that the box had chosen him, he took up his father's mantle and started killing foreign women. Red says that it requires only a few deaths, and then it would be over. Amber tries to persuade Red to let her go, but Red backs away. Becker enters and takes Amber to the basement. On their way downstairs, Amber sees the spirits of the dead women staring at her. Inside the sacrificial chamber, Becker disposes of Maria's headless corpse and chains Amber to the altar. Amber begs him to stop, but Becker is already in a trance. He goes to the stone box and opens it, revealing a dark and creepily long passageway within. Becker leaves the chamber and Ambar is left alone with the open box. Ambar hears thudding noises growing louder from inside the box. Butterflies soar around her. Suddenly, the box opens and Beto appears. He releases Ambar and the both of them flee the sacrificial chamber. They knock down a door and enter complete darkness. It's only a dream though, as Amber is asleep on the altar. A creepy creature gets out of the box. Amber is in a dreamlike state, sitting with her mother at the hospital now. The grotesque entity approaches Amber and puts its human hands around her head. Meanwhile, Amber's mother tries to make her stay with her a little longer. Amber sees that she has to go. Her mother attacks her then and tries to strangle her, but Amber yells and wakes up. In her dream, Amber smothers her mother and the creature retreats back inside the box. Amber sees it as it's slowly pushing the lid. Amber goes to check it out and looks at what appears to be human remains inside with a butterfly hovering over it. As Amber leaves the basement, she hears Petra screaming in terror. Amber arms herself 
with a traditional bat with sharp points and climbs the stairs. Red opens the door and Amber attacks him, injuring him in the leg and arm. She also wounds Becker before he disarms her and breaks her ankle. Petra breaks free from her bonds and attacks Becker, who manages to grab her and toss her off the top of the stairs to her death. Becker then goes to strangle Amber, but Amber slices his throat with a sharp piece of the bat and releases herself from his grip. As Becker kneels bleeding, Amber takes the bat again and bludgeons Becker to death. Amber hears Red's moaning and takes him to the sacrificial chamber. She opens the box and watches as the entity decapitates Red with its teeth. Amber closes the door to the basement and limps away. In the study, she glimpses at Red's spirit and walks to the door. But a weird sensation prevents her from leaving. Suddenly, her ankle is fixed, and what has possessed Becker and his father before him has gotten her now.